Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to make a little motivational, I hope, um, video for you guys. I'll have to break it up into a couple different sections, watch my time. Um, I, If you're new to HCG, um, these are just some things that I find really helpful to think about throughout my rounds. Um, or this is my second round, so it's this round. Um, and then I'm going to talk to you guys about some goals that I have th for this round and also some life goals. So um, let me just start off. I have five things that really motivate me and that I try to think about when I get discouraged on this protocol. Um, I try to call it a protocol. I do slip up and call it a diet, but I don't think it's a diet. I do think it is a way to change your habits and a way to um, really just, I don't know, just kind of reset yourself in the way that you think about food and um, everything else. So um, the first thing I wanted to, I'm just going to read these things, so I'm going to be looking down a lot. I apologize. Um, and the first thing I wrote is, HDG gives me an opportunity like none other. I can lose a ton of fat in a short amount of time. Don't waste these few precious days on negativity, denial, rationalizing cheats, or stressing about food at all. Instead, look at this time as a time for healing for my body, researching food for future health, and being positive. I'm making a huge, great, healthy, permanent change. Um, so the things I want to talk about, the reason I wrote that down, um, it's just this HCG, this protocol isn't like any other. You can't, I mean, this protocol works. You will lose fat. Um, not everybody loses at the same rate. You might lose 15 pounds in 40 days. You might lose 35 pounds in 40 days. You might lose whatever. I mean, guys have, I've known, I've seen some people where guys have lost 50 pounds in 40 days. Um, that's not really typical for women, but... <clears throat> You have a great opportunity here, and <clears throat> it it will work no matter what. And um, when you really think about it, it's so short. You can only be on this protocol for six weeks maximum. That is a month and a half. That is 40 days, and it's it's so short. It's like you know, is even if you only lost 10 pounds in that amount of time, that's huge. No other diet, you know, will give you those kind of results. And in the meantime, you can focus on things like changing your habits for good, because this gives you a great opportunity to get rid of everything bad that you're eating, all the sugar, all the, um, the wheat, all the, everything that is, you know, not good and toxic for our bodies. We have a chance to get rid of that and get rid of our cravings for that. So this is just a great protocol. Um, and it really is, like none other, I think, and um, I just think it's great. Um, denial, I wrote that in there because a lot of times people, and myself included, we kind of say, you know, I don't really know why I got fat. I don't know why I'm this size. I don't really eat a lot. I don't really, you know, whatever, and, um, or I'm not that fat, or I'm okay. I don't really care about this that much. Especially in a moment of weakness, like if I see a cookie that I want or something, it's like, I don't really, who cares? But what I know, that's kind of just denial setting in that, first of all, I made myself fat. <laughs> I stopped exercising. I started eating too much and the wrong types of foods. And second of all, I... Um, I don't want that anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't really, I do care what I look like, but that's not the main focus for me. For me, it's health. And for me, it's, you know, I mean, I do care what I look like as well. I don't want to like say that I don't or that that's not important because it is. I have a very in shape husband and it's embarrassing when you're not in shape anymore and you used to be. So, um, for me, also, just researching food for future health, I am trying to make a life change here, not just, um, and that's why I say permanent. I don't want to go back to eating candy bars and potato chips. And, I mean, those things, 
might be fine as a treat once in a while. I don't even know if I agree with that. So I'm really doing a lot of researching and figuring out what I need to do to make this a permanent change. And that's what we should use this time for. Um, so that when you're at these places, like a lot of people have problems on the protocol when they go out to like a barbecue or, or just out where there's other food and it's like, well, you know, they constantly think, I wish I wasn't on this protocol so I wouldn't eat it. For me, I think, well, I don't want to eat that even when I'm off the protocol. So, you know, I'm not interested in that really. I mean, yeah, it smells good. I like the way it looks. I like the way, you know, I remember it tasting. But I don't need that. Um, okay, second thing. Anytime I feel like cheating, I will think of how I feel afterwards. Sick, bloated, depressed, sad, mad at myself. Is that whatever really worth all that? No, because I am worth succeeding. Um, my first round, this is my second round. I think I already said that. But my first round, I cheated twice. The first one, I was at a movie theater and I just reached over and grabbed popcorn out of habit and was mad instantly, but then I was like, oh, I already ruined my diet, I might as well just eat whatever I want. Ask daddy, please. Um, so I really just binged that day. I ate, I ate a ton of popcorn at the movie theater, and then I got home and I had a bunch of chocolate. <laughs> and, um, I felt so horrible after I ate that. I just felt so disgusting. I felt sick. I threw up multiple times because I just felt so sick. Um, or no, I didn't throw up that time. Sorry, that that was the time I just kind of didn't care. And um, I did feel sick, but it wasn't like, it wasn't an emotional thing. Um, the second time I cheated, it definitely was. I And I didn't even eat that much that time. I had like M&M's, like a bag of M&M's, you know, a regular size bag of M&M's, and that time I felt sick. I felt really, actually really shaky, um, I think, because, I don't know, I would assume when you stop eating the way you normally eat and eat this way, it's almost like a diabetic, because once you introduce sugar again, you're not used to eating that, so my body was just, didn't know what to do with it, I think, and I did throw up a couple times and um, it was very emotionally hard on me and I just decided right then and there I was not going to cheat again on this protocol and then I read um, Weight Loss Apocalypse which is a great book if you are on this protocol and you have not read that I recommend reading it it is a great great book it's a great resource um, and it really helps me explain what's going on in this process and what damage you can do when you do cheat on this protocol and um, it really helped me <clears throat> not want to cheat anymore so if you haven't read it read it it's awesome um, okay next thing is use this time to focus on what habits you want to change for good and write them down um, I already talked about some of them and I'm gonna talk about them more when I make the second part of this video but anything that you want to do whether it be um, if you're an artist and you used to like painting and you haven't done it in a while or or you just want to start doing it, you know, just even if it's, you know, one, 20 minutes a day working on some, a project or if you're doing something else, if you're remodeling your house and you're, um, you know, trying to paint a room or whatever, just work on a habit that you want to change. I made my habits more about um, health and mind and soul, but... Um, for you, it might be something small like that. It might be just that you want to, um, really, it can be anything. It might be that you want to just bird watch for 20 minutes. It, it can be anything. Anything that you really want to change for good and you wish that you were doing that you aren't. And um, it doesn't have to be a big thing and it could be a huge thing. Um, you're already doing a huge thing when you're doing this protocol. So I would suggest probably doing a smaller thing, um, but it can be a huge thing. Like I said, um, okay, the next thing is to focus on the hunger scale. If you have read Weight Loss Apocalypse, you know what I'm talking about. And even if you haven't, the hunger scale is not a new um, technique to, to Robin. It's been around for a long time. You can look it up online. Um, 
and it's it's something that you just really want to know when you're hungry and only eat when you're hungry. Um, so focus on the hunger scale and only and only eat when hungry so that you can gauge hunger better in P3 and the rest of your life. Focus on distinguishing between cravings, emotional hunger, and true hunger. Um, so for me, um, when I went off of P, okay, so P2, if you're in P2 right now and you have the real HCG and I don't know about the homeopathic, probably the same thing, you realize that you are not hungry at all on this protocol. You aren't really wanting food. You're not really interested. I mean, as far as true hunger, you're not hungry very often. Um, now that's not to say that you won't have any cravings. That's not to say that if someone is eating um, one of your favorite foods before protocol, you know, some pasta with cheese sauce or whatever that you love, you know, it's not to say that you won't want that and you won't feel deprived because you can't have it. Um, but that would be a craving or emotional hunger. Or if you are upset and the first thing you usually do is grab a chocolate bar and you can't do that. <clears throat> And you feel like you don't have a release because of that. That's emotional hunger. Um, and you really need to figure out what when you're hungry and when you're not. So um, for me, when I went off of P2 last time, I went on P3 and I was hungry all the time. And it was true hunger. And I realized that, the, that P2, you're not hungry. And so for me... I was hunger. I had a lot of true hunger, but I kind of, because I wasn't watching it as carefully in P3, I kind of probably gave in to cravings and emotional hunger as well because I just, I just kind of forgot and I just, you know, if you don't have that feeling like you do on HCG where you literally are not hungry, it's hard to tell when you aren't. So that's what I mean by focusing on it because... You really need to focus on that during P2 and then during P3 so that you can really, really focus on it for the rest of your life. Like, for instance, if I went out to eat, I would eat, even if I wasn't necessarily hungry, but I was like, I'm just into, I'm just normally like everyone else, or most people, I should say, I'm into that rhythm of, okay, well, I'm out, I better get something, I don't want to make the people that I'm with feel bad or anything like that, and it's just like... No, you need to focus on yourself. You need to focus on eating only when you're hungry. Don't eat for other people's comfort. Don't eat for your own comfort. Eat for fuel when you're hungry, when your body is telling you that it needs food. Um, so that's that. Um, the next thing is don't listen to negative comments or people. Negativity does not belong in my life. Focus only on the positive things. Um... This is something that I've been struggling with for my whole life. I am, by nature, a negative person. Um, I think in the past few years, I've really changed to be more positive, and that takes work. That is not an overnight easy fix. I, My dad is very negative. My mother is very po used to be very positive. She's not really anymore, which is sad. But growing up, my mom was like the most positive person you would ever meet, and my dad was the most negative person that you would ever meet. So I unfortunately took after my dad, and I just look at the downside of everything, um, and I'm really trying to change that. And it took a lot of work for me to change that issue about myself. Um, but you just need to get negativity out of your life. Negativity is completely toxic completely toxic and it, it has no place in anyone's life and um, it's just something that especially while you're on this protocol you don't need um, I'm very choosy about who I tell that I'm doing this protocol because it gets very negative responses to be honest and I am actually going to stop this video and start part two because it's coming up to 15 minutes and I don't really know how long the videos can be on YouTube because I don't usually make super long videos, but I don't want it to get cut off again. So I'm just going to um, start up where we left off and call it part two.